I've been using portable power stations for several years now. I think they're great. And I was kind of curious, what would it be like to make my own portable power station? So in order to do that, I got some stuff and I did some experiments with inverters. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I want to be clear that a lot of the things I do in this video are things you should not do. But these were things I did to experiment just to see what would happen. So for starters, if you want to make your own portable power station, such as this one, you need a few things. So you would need something like this battery. You would need a power inverter like this. You would also need to get a solar charge controller and you would need to get some sort of battery monitor, though that's not necessary. And I don't actually have a monitor in this video, but you can kind of compare the prices between the two. It's definitely cheaper to make it on your own, but we'll kind of go over this a little bit later in the video, why this may not be the best option. All right, so got a portable power station. You can plug it into a solar panel here. So I'm trying to replicate this without using a portable power station. So in my shed, I've got a charge controller here and I'm using this LifePo 4 battery to test everything out with 230 watt hours. And then I've got this 1600 watt inverter that I can use to change the power from direct current into alternating current. Okay, so experiment number one, and again, do not do this, but I wanted to see what would happen if you plugged in a solar panel directly into the inverter. So I've got my power set up. So this is coming from a solar panel going directly into this inverter. I turn it on. It's a 100 watt solar panel and you can see. So there's about 22 volts going into it. There's nothing coming out, nothing coming out in the AC. I can, however, use the USB ports on the inverter. Those are working and they are charging my phone. So that's something that works. So you can kind of get DC power out of it this way, but you cannot get any AC power. The next experiment was using the battery and plugging that directly into the inverter. Now, when you do this, the inverter works as expected. So it's got about 12.9 volts going in, and then you can see 120 volts going out of the inverter. So you can now start using power like normal. You can plug in a device and it will work just as you would expect. So to test things out, I have a light that I've been turning on. You can see this LED panel. As I increase the brightness, it uses more power and you can kind of see that reflected a little bit on the inverter. Not a whole lot changes on the inverter. A few numbers, but that's about it. The next experiment I did was basically the correct way for how you would want to do this to make your own power station. So you need a charge controller. So you'd have a battery going into the charge controller and then solar panel going into the charge controller as well. And then when you use it this way, when you turn on the portable power station, again, it will work as expected. You can see I do have a bit more voltage because I'm getting power from the battery and from the solar panel. Those are all going through the charge controller and then I'm getting 120 volts out. And so when I use it like this, I can turn on power just fine and I can use this little LED panel, turn the power up and down and you can see that it does have a slight impact on the voltage going out of the inverter. All right, so the next experiment I did was I only put up the battery and I intentionally tried to draw more power than I knew the battery would be able to handle. So I turned on my saw here and then it turned off the inverter like this because it was too much power. So it just kind of shut the thing down. And then as I would turn the inverter on and off, I couldn't get it to come back on. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is. The battery is still fine and working, but I cannot turn the inverter on and off. So the next experiment, I did the same thing, but I had everything set up correctly. So I had solar plugged in, the battery plugged in, using the charge controller and everything like that. I went back to the saw and turned it on. And the same thing would happen where it's drawing too much power. So it turns the inverter off and you can see that the saw is turning off there and I can turn it on again, but because I'm getting the power from the solar, once it's off like this, so the display is still on, and if I turn the inverter off and then back on again, it will work as expected.
and I'm not exactly sure why it would do that with the solar panel and not just the battery, but I thought that was kind of interesting. So there's definitely an advantage to having a solar panel plugged in with that extra power going in. All right, so my next experiment, I removed the power from the solar. So it's just the battery now. I wanted to see what would happen if you're using a device. So here I am with a fan and drying out some blended up pears to make some pear leather. I have this fan on at night and I wanted to see what would happen when the sun goes down and I get no more power. So I just kind of emulated that by unplugging the solar and everything kept going as you would expect and as you would want it to. Yeah, so here I am removing it and then checking out to make sure everything's still working. And by removing it, I mean I'm removing the power coming from solar. And you can see the fan's still going strong, still working. So everything is good to go. This experiment, what happens when your battery is dead? When I came in in the morning with the fan on all night, the inverter was making kind of these weird noises uh, because there's just not enough power. But as soon as the sun came up and was bright enough, I could turn everything back on, even though the battery was dead and everything was working just fine. Okay, so in this experiment, I did two solar panels in parallel just to see what difference that would make. They're going into the charge controller and you can see they're plugged into the charge controller and the battery is plugged into the charge controller. And then for this last experiment, I did two solar panels in series and I did it directly into the inverter. Again, you should absolutely not do this. It fried the inverter, so it blew a capacitor. You can see the smoke coming out of here and when I open it up inside you can see that it is a blown capacitor that was the problem. So even though this does have overload protection when you use it incorrectly you are going to fry the unit and I suspected something like this might happen but I haven't heard anyone talk about this in other videos and I just wanted to see what would happen. So there you go. When you don't use a charge controller with your inverter, you run the risk of completely ruining your inverter because it is going to be too much power going into the inverter and there's nothing controlling that flow of power. All right. So going back to making this on your own, if you buy one, for about $1,400 and you try to replicate the same sort of watt hour unit, I put everything together in a spreadsheet and you can see that buying a 1280 watt hour portable power station is about $1,400 and doing the same thing, just buying the components separately is about probably about 800 to close to $1,000. So it can be cheaper to build your own portable power station, but what I kind of wanted to illustrate in this video is there's a lot of complications and things to consider if you're trying to build your own unit. Yes, you can do it cheaper, but there's a lot of things to consider like there is going to be some difficulty involved. You may not get the components to work as smoothly together as you want. Really, the main advantage of building your own portable power station is just how modular it can be and if you need to upgrade batteries or add additional batteries or remove batteries or things like that you can absolutely do that but for most things where you just want something simple i think spending the extra money to get a portable power station is absolutely worth it as i showed in the video with the inverter there's a lot of things that can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing or if you happen to mess up the wires or something like that ultimately you just need to decide if you want the convenience of buying a portable power station or if you need the flexibility of building your own where you can make it modular and you can swap out parts as you need i hope this video was useful for you in some way it really helped me to understand inverters better i've seen a lot of videos on inverters but i never really understood them i think until now where i've actually ruined one and used it in every way i could possibly think of so yeah there's my video thanks for watching have a great day